Hi, it's Grandma Majoris. In the country near Mount Ephraim lived a man whose name was Micah. The first thing we know about Micah was that he had stolen 1,100 shekels of silver from his mother, and which she had naturally made a considerable outcry when she discovered that her silver was gone. Afterwards, his conscience smote him, and he brought back his mother's money. But she took 200 shekels of it and gave it to a metal worker who made the silver into a little sacred image according to the custom of pagan people, which custom the men of Israel were always slipping into. And Micah set these images up in his house and he considered that he had a little church of his own. He said to one of his sons that he would have to be a priest to carry out the proper ritual in the image church. And with this arrangement, Michael felt very satisfied. But there came that seemed an opportunity to improve upon it. There came along the road one day a young man from the town of Bethlehem, who believed to be the tribe of Levi, a tribe which was far back in time as Moses had lived set apart and take care to worship at the tabernacle and to be sort of ordained ministry of the Israelites church. And he was going on his way. He arrived at the house of Micah. Where did you come from? asked Micah. Oh, I live in Levite of Bethlehem. I am looking about for a place to live in, he answered. Come and live with me, said Micah. You can be my priest. Every year I will give you ten shekels of silver and a suit of clothes and your food. So the young Levite said that he would stay, and Micah had a conception service and made him his own particular household chapel and he was very pleased with himself and with the situation in general. Now I know, said Micah, that the Lord will do me good, since I have a real Levite in my to be my priest. But trouble was brewing in a way that Micah had little thought. Those were days, as history says, when there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Not only individual men did as they chose, but the several of the tribes did also. A tribe of Dan had had its share in the division of the country, but it was one of the opinion it had not had enough, and it so determined that it could go and annex the land of some of the neighbors. Consequently, it sent the neighborhood where Micah lived. They turned in to Micah's house to spend the night. And to their surprise, they heard a voice that they knew. It was the voice of Micah's young Levite priest, who was in various wonders had gone through the town of Dan. Who brought you here? They inquired to him. What are you doing in this place? And what is it that you have here? He told them how it was that he had came here and how Micah had hired him to be his priest. They asked him to consult the images and tell them whether they were going to have good luck on their venture. And he came back and he told them that they certainly would. On they pressed, therefore, further to the north and came presently up near the headwaters of the Jordan River and arrived at a town called Laish, where people were dwelling very serenely. In the country round Laish, there were no strong authorities to preserve the law and order. The scouts went back, therefore, and told the rest of the men of Dan that there was a chance to migrate to a country easy to take and well worth having. So 600 Danites armed themselves, and with their weapons, they marched north. 
On their way toward Laish, they passed by Mount Ephraim and came to the house of Micah. The five scouts who had been that way before said to the others, Do you know that in that house there are some sacred images? Consider then what you have to do. That they did do was stand their ground at the gate of Micah's property while the five scouts went into the house and appropriated all his silver images. They stole from him. What are you doing, said the priest. Hold your tongue, they said to him. Put your hands over your mouth and go with us. You can be our priest, which is better to be the priest of a house of one man or the priest of a whole tribe. The priest thought that question, especially under the circumstances, he answered himself. And so he went along with the Danites, and they with Micah's stolen images. When they had gone a good way on their road, Micah discovered what had happened and gathered his neighbors around him. He set out after the Danites that overtook them. When they saw the Danites ahead of him, they shouted. Then the men of Dan turned around and said to Micah, What ails you? What have you come with such a company as this? And Mecca cried in his answer, You have taken away my gods, which I made, and my priests too, and they are gone away with them. What more do I have, he asked. And then you ask me what ails me? The man replied to Dan, You had better not let your voice be heard so loud lest some hot-tempered fellows here run upon you, and you lose your life and the lives of your whole household. So they turned their backs, and they marched off. And Micah, seeing that they were too strong for him, he turned and went back to his own house. So Micah lost his priests. Micah lost his gods, and thought, no doubt, that he had surely lost his religion, and he went back home without any of them. Thank you so much.